this rolling ball sort of paradigm has some limitations in it and some things to be aware of. Two of them are uh, what happens when the angle between the two input surfaces varies a lot. Here they're fairly consistent, but they don't need to be. Surfaces can change a lot in the angle that lies between them. And what happens with a rolling ball is that at one end, for instance, here where the angle is very sharp, that rolling ball will touch the surfaces uh, at two points that are quite far apart. And over on the other end where the angle is much more shallow, the contact points of that rolling ball will be very close together. And the consequence of that in a fillet is that the fillet turns out to has to be very tapered to maintain a constant radius. So this is still radius 10. It's radius 10 all the way along, but you can see that the actual surface gets quite a lot wider where the uh, angle is sharp. So as a designer, you may or may not like that. You may uh, want to do something different. In particular, make those two edges parallel. And Rhino has tools to do that to create a fillet that has parallel edges, which aesthetically might be a lot more what you're interested in as a designer. Um, sort of the bad news, or how we're varying our conditions here, is that this is no longer a constant radius fillet. This is a variable radius fillet. In order to get those edges to be nice and parallel, and they're just about 20 units apart all the way along here, uh, in order to get those to be nice and parallel, the radius of the fillet has to change, in this case, quite a lot. If I extract an ISO curve, at this end, and another one at this end, and then measure the radius. Here you can see it's 11.3, and out here on this other ISO curve, it's up close to 34 units. So this is not a, a constant radius rolling ball, but the rolling ball itself has to change radius as it rolls along. So there are tools for making that happen in Rhino, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you some of those in the future as well.